Hello, bug. Hi, welcome back to the channel. My name is Lace, and this is a Matrix video, part two, actually, because last time we talked about all of these ones over here, Shiro, Crow, Samir, which one is the best? And then I went ahead and did more because a lot of the comments have been asking for things like, oh, what if you actually consider the four piece set? What if you consider like uh, the Sebek ones, the SRs, as well as like the Robarg? Is Huma actually better than all of the other ones if you're using Dash Attack on Frig? The answer, the short answer to that one is yes. But as for the answers for the rest of them, we'll be exploring them in this video today. So there are going to be a couple more observations, a few more conclusions, but I wanted to run through this as well as the assumptions I made, which is very, very important. So strap yourselves in and let's uh, let's talk about matrices again. <laughs> what the frick? And so let's kick things off with a couple of the new things. The first thing I wanted to show you guys was this guy down here and this one on the left-hand side, the B column, which is nothing, and this DPS row. This B column, nothing, essentially represents if I had no matrices, how much is my expected damage? And so at 100% crit rate, we would expect our average damage to be at 150% of our normal damage. And that's true because if you crit every single hit 100% of the time, it means that you're going to be getting your crit damage plus 50% applied to every single hit. And so your expected damage is 150%, which makes a lot of sense. Now from there, what I did was I actually compared it against a few more numbers. So I'm comparing like each column. So this one over here against the original base nothing case. So for this one over here, I'm saying that Crow zero stars, two piece set, is going to give you a 9.6% DPS gain at 100% crit. Now, you need to remember that that 100% crit is a very, very important factor because as we know, Crow's uh, DPS, his average DPS, it will increase as we get more crit rate, right? So the more crit rate you get, the more valuable the crit damage will be and vice versa as well. And so if you wanted to see the DPS gain for like any of these ones over here, just do like, for example, 156.03 divided by 143. And you'll probably get something like 8% or 9% or something. And so my guys, last time we explored Crow, Shiro, Samir, all the way up to three stars. And we can see over here that Samir 3 by herself gives a 20% increase to total damage, assuming of course that you actually are able to get all of those 20 stacks and maintain it with 100% uptime. It's actually not that bad. I, I I recently got Samir like yesterday or two days ago and with like Frig, with uh, some of the other builds, like the fast hitting builds, as well as the AOE ones, because every single attack, so if you hit six mobs, you get six stacks. It's it's actually pretty reasonable. However, what I really wanted to talk about today were the new ones in which I started compounding some of the ones that we did before. So for example, Crow Zero and Samir Zero all the way up to Crow Three and Shiro Three. And so as you can see, I didn't combine like the Crow One with the Samir One or the Crow One with the Samir Three. There would just be way too many combinations. If you just had a quick look at the formula, I, okay. Maybe, you know what, that, <laughs> that might be a little bit too complex. But you can certainly work it out if you um, take a little bit of time to learn this one over here, or you can just pretend that, you know, for this one over here, Crow 1 with Samir 1, for example, is going to sit in between these two over here. So it's going to sit in between 20% and 40%, which actually doesn't help much. It's probably like, I don't know, 30%. <laughs> so yeah, from this, doing these combinations, what I found is that Crow 3 and Samir 3 does indeed give you the best DPS. However, remember, this is three star matrices and they give you a 40% DPS increase on average at 100% crit rate. That's a lot less than I thought it'd be. I thought it would actually like double your damage or something, but alas, it's actually not that good. And by good, I mean, it's kind of like the gap between the zero and the three stars is actually not too much. It's 20%, which is quite good, but it's not like, you know, three times the damage, which is nice in terms of a balance point of view. And so realistically speaking, we're probably gonna be like around here. Crow zero, Samir zero, Shido zero. And so 20% increase with a two, two set, two Crow, two Samir, it's actually pretty decent. And so with that, I wanted to come over to the next ones, which are the Sebex now. Sebek is actually kind of competitive and it's almost reasonable to assume that you could actually get up to Sebek 2, maybe have a look at Sebek 1 like over here. And so what I've done with Sebek is I've gone from Sebek 0 to Sebek 1 to Sebek 2 because SR matrices can only go up to 2 stars and then I've also mapped out how exactly it scales with the number of enemies. So if you guys don't know what Sebek does, it does this one. Increase damage dealt by 6, 7.5 and 9% for each enemy nearby. 
up to three stacks. So what that means is that if there are three enemies, hint, hint, bygone, then you could actually get up to 27% damage, which is honestly freaking insane. And so coming back over to this one over here, you can see this one, Sebek 2 with three enemies actually goes up to 27% increase in damage, which is quite competitive. However, before we go on, I need to mention a couple of things. And so I'm going to scroll over to the uh, discussions one, uh, conclusions and observations. And the first thing I want to mention is that SR matrices have a lower max level cap and base stats and stack growth than an SSR matrix. So SR matrices, the purple ones, the uh, Rabag and the Sebek, these can actually only go up to level 70 if I'm not wrong. That may be because of the level cap. However, even if that was true, the stack growth is also different. So like a Sebek matrix would give maybe like 75 or maybe 70% of the stats, the attack and HP or attack and crit of like a Samir matrix or a Tsubasa matrix, for example. And so unfortunately, whilst the Sebek matrix, the case of Sebek 2 with three enemies, this one over over here seems really really good at 27% and that's because it is. It actually unfortunately does not take into account the stat bonuses of the SSR matrices and so realistically speaking this number over here or these numbers over here and the SR ones, the Sebex as well as the Robargs, they're actually probably going to be a little bit closer or further depending on the way that you are looking at them. And so the second thing that I need to mention for Sebek is that you need three set piece for Sebek. What that means is that one, two, three, you only have one single one and this means that you have to compare a three-piece set to a two-two set set if that makes sense like uh, these ones over here Samir and Shido and uh, Crow and Shido so for example Crow zero Samir zero about 20% DPS gain. If I come over to, for example, Sebek 1 with three enemies, honestly, that's a pretty reasonable assumption, especially in Bygone. You're going to be doing 22.5% extra damage on top of like your base without any of the matrices. And then that is honestly quite comparable to these ones over here. I think that it is actually really good. Sebek is actually a fantastic stand in for whilst you're waiting to farm up your crows and your shitos and your simias or whatever. And so with that, let's start talking about the Huma over here. Huma 0123. Now, this case can only be applied to Frig. And so what Huma's matrix does, if you guys don't know, is that for hitting targets with dodge skills, it inflicts bleed and it does this much amount of bleed every second for the next five seconds. However, if you reapply it every single time, it's essentially an on-hit effect, right? So if you have three lines normally with Frigg's dash attack, you then actually get another three lines and these three lines are at 15%. So I think that this is actually incredibly good because this is almost a non-conditional, well, you must use the dash attack on Frigg. So it's not gonna work with the helicopter spam. This is going to give a flat 15% damage on every single hit with the Huma. And so therefore, if I compare this to all of the other matrices, I would say that the Huma matrix at the same level, so Huma 0, Huma 1, whatever, it's going to be only second to Samir. And so my recommendation for Frigg's best in slot would be two Huma and two Samir. And that is not to say that Huma and Crow aren't going to work or Huma and Shido aren't going to work. They are all going to work. And even not using Huma is also going to work as well. However, in the special case of Frigg, Huma works surprisingly well. And so with that, let's start talking about the Robarg matrix. Now, this is a really interesting one because I've modeled it in a way that it's kind of realistic, but it's not really realistic, but let's just talk about it. And so before we get started, Robarg over here, if you guys don't know what Robarg does, she essentially, upon shatter, you'll poison the target and you'll deal damage equal to X amount of damage every second for 10 seconds. Now, what that means is that the total damage every second for 10 seconds 45% means 450% total damage every time the target gets shattered. This actually applies, I believe, to all targets that get shattered. There is no ICD, no internal cooldown. Now, what exactly does that mean? So the shield, generally speaking, comes up about every 30 seconds or so. If it's every 40 seconds, then obviously your DPS would lower. However, I'm for the sakes of this one over here, I've just modeled it against 30 seconds. So what I've done over here is normal attack, uh, non-crit plus the crit case and then I've just done okay if we don't crit with Rabag and this lasts over 30 seconds and if we do crit with Rabag and it lasts for 30 seconds now damage over time actually does crit if you keep a close eye on your bleeds on your burns from like Cobalt and the Hormas then you will realize that they do actually indeed 
crit. So I have made the assumption that this poison will also crit as well. And for this particular column, AH, I have said that it is going to proc every 30 seconds. If you wanted to change that, you could uh, make a copy of the sheet and you just change this 30 over here and this 30 over here to change it to every 40 seconds. Maybe it's a more realistic model. I'm not entirely sure, but I think 30 seconds is kind of okay, especially in the context of Bygone Phantasm. And so obviously, if the shields actually come up more, you'll be able to get more Rebox. However, if the shields are coming up more, it means that you are doing 50% to that mob for a longer time overall, which is honestly, a DPS loss. So just because it, like the shield's coming up more and you can trigger it more often, it doesn't mean you're going to get an overall DPS gain. And that's what I don't really like about Rabag's one over here. Now onto the last one, which is the King Zero at 30 seconds interval. So for those of you who are unfamiliar with King, I'm going to come down. When a target is shattered, grant 8 to 14% damage boost for 25 seconds. And only the highest level is applied when the effect is obtained repeatedly. So what this is just trying to do is like, oh, if you're going to shatter like five units, uh, together, then you will only get one of the buffs. That's essentially what it's protecting against. I have actually tested this and it does indeed stack with like your Shido and your Samir and all of that. So you can use your Shido, like two Shido or two Samir and two King if you wish. However, the smarter way to do this one is to actually put this on your Shatterer. So I'm talking like something like this, maybe put it on your Meryl or put it on your King over here. And that buff will actually transfer over so that you can use these two buffs plus the King buff altogether, which is honestly pretty juiced. Because to be honest, if I came back over here, this is uh, an 8% increase. If I came back to the matrix over here, it's an 8% increase. Even the Samir gives a 10% increase at like the zero star advancement. And it also lasts quite a long time. And this one is not lasting forever. So it's only 25 seconds. What I've done is I've actually modeled it against the 30 seconds again. And in total, it actually comes out looking okay. It's an 8% increase in DPS. And obviously if your shatter cycle is even lower, so for example, this 25 over 30, if you believe that you're gonna be actually getting a shatter every 40 seconds, then change this 30 to a 40, change this 30 to a 40, and obviously the numbers will plummet. However, remember, you can actually swap this buff in, which is the strength of the King Matrix. And so yeah, that's the update that I have for you guys. I've considered a bunch of SR matrices. I've considered the compounding of like some of the basic matrices. And I could not consider the Samir Matrix because unfortunately, it's a little bit too hard to calculate at this time. But my gut feeling is that it's very good. It is very, very good considering it is actually going to be juicing up her best like core skill. So if I go into like the Samir over here, increase dual EM stars electrical explosions, which is a C1 damage by X much percent. And this is essentially, wait, wait, I actually can calculate. Give me a second. All right, guys. So I've done the calculation. I think it's correct. And what I'm doing here is on a non crit, I do normal damage, but on a crit, what I do get is I get an extra 0.3, 30% damage. And that's just simply from her C1. So if I show you uh, this one right here, this one over here, she gets an extra 30% attack on a cooldown of 0.2 seconds, which I have incorporated uh, over here. However, with the four piece matrix set, she actually gets 16% extra damage on that explosion. So this one over here. And so therefore that's gonna get added to the 0.3, the 30% before. So in total, it will actually be 46% damage on the explosion every 0.2 seconds. So I've done the modeling there. I think it's actually correct. And so the four piece set works out to be about 16.75% damage increase. However, the unfair thing about this one is that it is assuming a C1 Samir, and it is also gonna be adding on that extra 0.3% damage, that extra 30% damage that is coming from her C1. The other ones did not have any of that consideration. And so I would say like the true, I guess, gain from this one might be a little bit less. And of course, remember that this is simply just for Samir. This only works on Samir. And so, yeah, honestly, like I hope that kind of made sense. I'm probably pretty done with this spreadsheet over here. I want to do a gear calculator next. I think it's almost done. And so let me know how you guys feel about all of these. Are you guys actually using some of the S SR ones. For me personally, I was using like the NA, I was using the Echo. And unfortunately, because those ones are more about like the energy recharge, uh, like the weapon charge and stuff, it's a lot harder to quantify, especially like 
since we don't have like the full weapon charge what exactly is a full weapon charge and how they translate into discharges like honestly i don't even want to touch discharges and so my guys let me know if you guys do have any other requests for any matrix calculations down in the comments below and maybe i'll have a look at them if i have some more free time but my guys if you did enjoy this video please consider leaving a like subscribing to the channel and turning on that notification bell However, as, uh, as your boy King once said, all good things must come to an end. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.